Guys, so the subject of today's uh, mini lecture is moments. And I'm not talking about the casual use of that word, uh, which means instances or little points in time, um, short pieces of time. I'm instead talking about statistical moments. And um, statistics is kind of funny. I, I actually should look up how they came up with that word moment. Um, but basically, uh, we have, uh, with moments, mathematical formulas for these things. And some of these moments, it turns out, are going to be uh, important to us. So, and these are just simply listed as first, second, and third moments. And so what is the first moment in statistics? First moment in statistics is nothing more than the sum of y sub i minus y bar all over n. All right, so uh, in these videos, I'm gonna be using some terms here. And the first one I wanna talk about is summation. Um, and this, this sign simply means summation. And typically you would want to know over uh, in this case, for example, we would say over all I observations. So if we have observations, and our observations um, we're just listing here, so these are actually numbers, and our observation on individual I is that number. Okay, and obviously Y bar is indicating the mean, so I'm assuming you recognize that terminology, uh, but y sub i is any given observation. Uh, the collection of observations gave the value of the mean. Okay, so this just means summing all of these uh, differences between each observation and the mean. And in fact, um, your book writes this deviation as a lowercase y sub i. In other words, it's the subtraction of the actual observation from the mean, and it calls it y sub i, and those are the deviations. So if we sum all the deviations and divide by the number of them, right, because n is the number of observations, we covered that when we were talking about data, so n is the number of observations. Um, if we sum across uh, all the observations, the deviations from the mean, uh, and we divide by the number of those observations, we will get the first moment. And I'm going to just show you really quickly with a um, what I call a KISS data set that the first moment always is zero. So it's kind of a trivial moment in statistics. Um, now what do I mean by the KISS data set? I mean keep it Simple, stupid. Not simple and stupid, but simple. Stupid meaning um, me <laughs> uh, or you. Uh, we're going to keep it simple, stupid, and that is KISS. So I'm going to do this a lot in this course. I'm going to use very simplified data sets to show um, particular concepts. And uh, so um, what's an example of a simple data set? Um, well, let's imagine that we have y1 is 1, uh, y2 is, what do you want it to be, 3, uh, and y3 equals 5. Isn't that nice and simple? Because we can easily see that y bar is just 3, right? Because we have a deviation 2 below and a deviation 2 above, so, or we can add them all up. 4 plus 5 is 9, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Um, but you could have probably done that in your head. All right, so let's apply the first moment formula to this. So if we sum all the deviations, so we have 1 minus 3 plus, we're going to add, Let's remove this for the time being. We're going to add uh, 3 minus 3, which is y2. Uh, and then we're going to add 5 minus 3. And we're going to divide all of that by the number of observations, n equals 3 in this data set, right? So what does that give us? That gives us minus 2 plus 0 plus 2 
all divided by 3 equals, and you can easily see that that is 0. And in fact, no matter what set of numbers we have from small to large, whatever, um, we will get that being 0. It doesn't even matter, for example, that, um, that it happens to be this one, this middle one, is the same as the mean. We could have 1, uh, 2, and 6, and we would get the same result, right? So we have 1 minus 2, we have 2 minus, or sorry, 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, and 6 minus 3. And if we add all those up, we get, what, minus 2, minus 1, I'm jamming this all together here, and 3. If we add all those up, we get 0. So the first moment is always 0, and therefore, first moment in statistics is kind of trivial. But I want you to look at the structure of this formula a little bit, and you'll see a relationship to the other moments we're going to talk about next. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the second moment. I'll give you the formula for it. This is also, by the way, just kind of a way of getting you used to um, these summation signs and things like that. So we're going to have the observation minus the mean, but this time we're going to square the deviations and we're going to divide by n minus 1. Now this might look familiar to you because this is in fact the second moment is the variance. Okay? It's sometimes given the name sigma squared, or actually more properly for a sample, s squared. And because we're dividing by n minus 1, it really is the sample variance, not the population parametric variance. So we're going to really use it as a sample variance. And, and so um, the second moment is important in statistics. In fact, we are going to develop tests called ANOVAs where we are basically, the va in this is variance, we are basically going to really spend a lot of time talking about variance and its analysis uh, because that's the basis for doing lots and lots of statistical tests as you're going to see coming up. So that's an important one. What about the third moment? The formula is going to look kind of familiar to it, a little bit different though. We have this time we're going to put an n in the front and we're going to put the summation sign. We're going to look at the deviation from the mean. But this time we're going to cube it. And then we're going to put in the denominator n minus 1 times n minus 2 times the variance cubed. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Um, this one, again, uh, the derivation of it is rather obscure. Uh, it doesn't matter that you understand that right now, but this is an important quantity in statistics. It's actually called the skewness. And we're going to cover skewness a little bit later, and you're going to see that it's actually a measure of the deviation from, uh, one of the measures of the deviation from a normal distribution. And, um, you know, a normal distribution, of course, is the old bell-shaped curve. So if we look at some values of y sub i in a population and we kind of look at the, the number of observations that take on different values of y sub i in a population, it will tend to look like this. And if it's perfectly normal, then it won't be skewed. But recall in a previous video, I mentioned that it's going to be very important that um, we have a normal distribution. You're going to see that more as we talk about things we do with the normal distribution such as calculate um, uh, things like confidence intervals, okay? Um, but anyway, skewness is a measure of the deviation from normal, and in fact, we could have deviations in a number of ways, and I'll talk about that in class, but basically we could have uh, something that's skewed to the right, like that, or something that's skewed to the left, like that. In other words, it has a long tail in one direction or the other. And skewness measures that. And well, again, we're going to see with SAS Jump how Jump calculates skewness for, for you. And it's actually related to the variance. Um, but notice that the terms are cubed and the deviation term is cubed. What about the fourth moment? OK, the fourth moment uh, is actually another one that's used in statistics. And we're going to again have uh, SAS Jump measure it for us and give us a value for it. It is n plus 1 times n times the summation 
What do you think it is? You got it. The deviation of every observation from the mean to the fourth power, all divided by n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times <clears throat> the standard deviation of the fourth power. Uh, and then there's another term thrown in here for good measure, n minus 3 times n minus 1 quantity squared all over n minus 2 times n minus 3. And again, I don't care that you understand the derivation of this. What I want you to understand is what it is, what the quantity is telling you about. It's, talk, it's telling you about something called kurtosis. Sounds like bad breath or something, doesn't it? <laughs> so kurtosis uh, is a measure, another measure of the deviation from normality. Uh, let me just make a, a quick diagram here to show you uh, a couple kinds of kurtosis we can have. So if this is a normal distribution, one kind of kurtosis we can have is tails that are too long and a middle that's too high. And I didn't draw that very beautifully there, but um, this is called leptokurtic. Now it's not skewed to the right or to the left. It's actually just exaggerated in the middle and the tails relative to the shoulders. And of course, the other kind of skewness you can have is something that does the opposite, that emphasizes the shoulders. It's too big in the shoulders, too low in the middle, and looks like that. And that is called platycurtic. And this kurtosis number tells you um, whether you're leptocurtic or platycurtic. And again, we're going to get that number uh, out of SAS jump. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about these moments because I think they're kind of interesting. And, um, and actually, um, this is a good opportunity to get you to think about um, what the kth moment might be. Uh, and, and I told you, uh, I'm going to test whether you've actually looked at these videos or not sometimes, and um, the kth moment is uh, the Kodak moment. <laughs> so if you can repeat that back on the in-class quiz that I give you after, I, after you look at this video, I will know that you have watched this video. All right, that's it for now. Um, we'll move on to other scintillating topics in future lessons.